Tinubu jets out to London, shunning presidential debate. We all know that Arise News has scheduled this town hall meeting for the presidential candidate, you know, which is to hold today, Sunday. And unfortunately, Tinubu is not in Nigeria. Tinubu has traveled again to London. Honestly, this is going to be another Buari, you know. How come Tinubu is leaving the country when he has a presidential town hall meeting to attend to tell Nigerians what he'll be doing for them if elected? He doesn't want to discuss. He doesn't want to have time with his people. And you see, people keep saying that Tinubu is playing God. He has not even become the president and he doesn't want to listen to the people. The people are asking you to come for a debate and you are telling them that you will not debate with anybody. You know, honestly, Nigerians should not even consider Tinubu as a presidential candidate. Tinubu is not in town. Upon he has the invitation, he has been notified about this town hall meeting. He just ignored it. He shunned it and just traveled to London. So guys, this is the kind of country we are in where there is no rule of law. People do whatever they want to do. They don't consider the masses. They don't consider the people who are going to elect them or the people who elected them. They don't consider us. As election is coming now, they have confidence that their money is going to speak for them. They will be able to buy enough votes, as many as they want. You know, this is the confidence that APC has, that they will use money to influence people. And that is why whatever the people are asking for, they are not paying attention. When they are asked to come for a presidential town hall meeting, they don't want. If they are asked to come for a debate, they are not interested. They only have confidence in their money. Honestly, we've got to change the narrative. Please, We've got to change the narrative. If you are there and you are still following APC, you are supporting APC, honestly, you don't like Nigeria. You are an enemy of this country called Nigeria. We don't want people like this in power. Please, let us queue behind Peter Obi. Call Peter Obi anywhere, anytime. Peter Obi is willing to come to talk to the Nigerian people. But we have these politicians in APC who keep playing God and they decide whatever they want to decide. All they know is if they have a rally or they have a campaign, they will be able to buy the number of crowd they want and come and show the world to tell us that people are in support of them. Please don't be fooled. I tell you, majority of the Nigerian people are tired of APC. People are tired of this government. Honestly, let me know what you think in the comment section about Tinubu not attending this town hall meeting. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with your friends and families. Thank you. Rise News. Uh, let me take you now to Abuja and to my colleague, Adeshua uh, Omorowan, who's going to ask the next question. And uh, she will, of course, uh, keep engaged with the candidates. So do stay attentive. Adeshua, over to you. Thank you, Charles. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Abuja studios. Dear candidates, you have two minutes each to answer this next question. The federal government has blamed the subnationals, that is the state government, for the state of poverty in Nigeria. Should you become the next president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, what will you do to reverse this trend of stifling of local government funds, which has contributed to the level of poverty and insecurity in the country? Let me begin with the candidates for the NNPP. With the candidates for the NNPP. Yes. Um, coincidentally, I was governor for eight years in Kano. And uh, I was very conversant with the difficulties and issues involved uh, with handling the uh, local government funds. In our own opinion, in NNPP, there is need for us to uh, look at the constitution as it is today, so that uh, provisions can be made whereby the local government uh, 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 authorities can get their money direct from the federal uh, allocation. Now, even though we had a similar case uh, in the past, 
and the local government did not uh, handle the resources but it is the intention of our government not only to ensure that uh, those monies are being sent to the local governments but we'll get a lot of uh, ways of ensuring that uh, uh, local governments and of course even states are being advised in terms of working together uh, to ensure that every single naira that is being given out of the treasury at national level are being utilized uh, effectively. We will encourage uh, local governments to do the right thing by way of doing their projects and programs. And also because of the failure that we have seen in government uh, over the years, that is why in our blueprint, we decided to create the uh, CPRC, the Community Participation and Reorientation Committees that will work at what level. And uh, we are now in the process of enlightening the public to understand what we mean because in Kano we were able to do it very effectively and successfully. We have those uh, 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 committees in all the 8,809 words that we have in this country and the resources will be channeled from federal government straight to those uh, words of course through the necessary legislation at the national level. So we are going to where we realize that there are issues uh, especially now that uh, most governors if not all of them uh, 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 of course uh, are stifling the, uh, the local governments in their states which shouldn't be acceptable to any responsible government. So we have a very robust arrangement whereby we are going to work not only with the local governments in many ways because we are serving the same people whether we are in the same party or not we believe that uh, the people of this country should be given a good governance at all levels of state local government and at national level we will continue to encourage the local government and states to ensure that education is given priority and of course other areas that will help the people the infrastructure the agriculture uh, and so on and so forth are given uh, due uh, priority and of course the issue of uh, electricity and so on to ensure that uh, we have opportunity for our young men and women to have job opportunities across the country thank you well thank you Thank you very much indeed. And uh, I guess you will please continue because, uh, yeah, go, go ahead. Yes, I, I was speaking to the candidate of the Liberal Party. Mr. Peter will be pleased. Yes, I, I was speaking to the candidate of the Liberal Party. Mr. Yes. I Yes. Uh, it is the state governments that are the subnationals that are causing poverty. Because if you look at what is today causing the poverty level that we have, you first have to look at the issue of security, which is federal government. Issue of physical viability and everything, which is federal government. Most of the things that are causing it today reside on the purview of federal government. And I'm going to deal with it on issue of managing local government resources. I managed it for eight years. And what I always tell people, go and see how we managed to work with the state and local government to be able to effectively use the resources in area of education, in area of primary health care, and other development areas. And that is what we will continue. But the major cost of poverty in Nigeria is issues that reside with federal government. It is the federal government that will revise the productivity by first, if the country is properly secured, you return confidence in investors to local like this. If you bring appropriate measures to have conducive environment, the great environment that investors can come in and everything. So I think you decide on federal government. Right, okay. Um, thank you very much indeed. And, and I think uh, Adesua uh, wants the 
the same question to be directed to you, uh, uh, Waziri Atiku Abubakar. Um, thank you very much. Again, when I assume office as vice president in 1990, Uh, what was handed over to me was local government administration. And when it was handed over to me, I gave instructions to the Accountant General that all local government allocations should be transferred to the local government straight. After implementing that policy for nine months, the governors protested and said, that's not constitutional. So we looked at the constitution and they said there was uh, supposed to be a joint account at the state level where local government funds should be transferred and also the state government was supposed to also put in a certain percentage of their uh, revenue into that uh, account. And then it was then moved to that joint account. So uh, local governments now started getting their funding through the state's joint accounts. And that is where we have problems. Because in that process, some state governments started, you know, taking part of the local government finances. Some said they were going to run universities which the state government set up. Uh, some said uh, local government should contribute to, to certain projects, you know, in the states. And therefore, at the end of the day, the funds were being depleted and the local governments were left with no funding until, in fact, it has gone to virtually nothing now. But most importantly, we must look at the laws, particularly the constitution, and see how we can make these local governments both independent as far as their financial uh, transactions or revenues are concerned, and also how we can protect you know, uh, their interests if funds are transferred from the federal government. I think that is a major uh, flaw, you know, in our laws as far as uh, local government uh, uh, finances are concerned. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for that and also for ending dead on time there. Um, I I'm told that my colleague in uh, Abuja, Adeshua Omarwan, is having some connection problems, perhaps having difficulty hearing us uh, whilst we're restoring that line and I'm told that that line is now restored so let's uh, return to Adeshua Omoruan in Abuja. Thank you very much Charles. We do have in our Abuja studios uh, seasoned journalists who are representing our partners today in the third of the series of the town hall series as Nigeria counts down to another crucial election come 2023. Now some of those panel members we have the opportunity to ask the candidates some questions on poverty which we have dwelt upon uh, for quite some time now and I would like to call the first member of that panel representative of the Guardian newspaper Dr. Bridget Onoche. Thank you very much. Yeah my question goes to the presidential candidate of Labour Party Mr. Peter Obi. Sir, you just explained how you were able to work harmoniously with the local government areas to ensure even development in the states. If elected into office as the president, how do you intend to ensure that state governors throw your part so that there will be even development? I ask this because if you succeed at the federal, but states remain uh, backward, the book will still fall on your table. Thank you. Table. Thank you. And uh, let me call on the representative of the cable, Sunday Ishua. Of the cable. All right. Um, of the cable. My name is Sunday Ishua from Leadership Newspaper. Uh, my question is for all the presidential um, candidates. And... Um, the question is, uh, it concerns education, because um, I don't want to talk about how the government have ignored the researches that are taking place in the Nigerian universities. I want to talk about 
the issue of strike where um, ASU, which was formed in 1978, have gone for strike action for more than 33 times. And in these 33 times, in an average, it has been there for, uh, the, the strike have lasted for more than six months, you know. Now, if you become president, I'm talking about all the presidential candidates, how are you going to address this issue of um, ASU strike? Are you going to privatize the unions, or are you going to adhere to the 2009 agreement you know, that the federal government entered with ASU. Thank you. May I remind our seasoned journalists and our partners uh, to follow uh, the prompt. We are dealing with poverty at this time. Thank you so much from the leadership. I'll move to the cable. He's Daikaza Dai Shibaya. He represents the cable. Hello. Go ahead. Okay. Hello. Um, I have. Um, okay. So I have um, two questions. Um, one question, okay, one question. Okay, one question is this: um, Before the National Assembly, there is um, an executive bill to institutionalize um, SIPs. Before we had SIPs, we had. Um, we had Shopee. Now, these are programs that have been designed to address poverty. If you become, um, if um, you get into office, and that's everybody, um, what, are you going to sustain this? Do you think it has addressed poverty? And if no, what, um, what will you do? What will your program be? How will you design your program? Tell us about that. Okay. Well, back I, to the right, I, I think, um, they're quite a series of rather confusing questions, I have to say, and that's not really entirely fair on the uh, candidates here. So let's focus on the last question, because we haven't got to education yet. Let's focus on the last question, which had to do with poverty. And I think that question was directed at you, uh, Pete Obi. Um, and I think there was also another question before that, because it, it got a little bit as a I said confusing um, from Dr. Onochie about how you were going to deal with um, the, the the states if you become president. Because I mean, there's a division between you know states and, and the federal government. The federal government has its powers. The states have has its powers. So um, pick and choose which you want well, to answer first. Quite frankly, for any meaningful development, any meaningful thing, the federal government must work seamlessly with the subnational. In fact, whenever one of the things that have made us to fail in Millennium Development Goals is that we were not able to streamline that process into our development agenda, starting from the local, subnational, and national. So for us to have any meaningful development, that is why even in the constitution, there's what you call economic council which means every month, which is supposed to be the states and federal, because they're supposed to move sim simultaneously and seamlessly in development. And that I can assure you, I will do. I said it that I will be at the center ensuring that you communicate and deal with all the states. On issue of uh, education and also, First is that tertiary education. The most critical... Yeah, I, I think, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's a question that will come later. I think they're just kind of three. I want to get through with all the poverty questions and then we'll change to education and health care and, and all the rest of it. On the issue of the poverty one, which is SIPs and Shopee, which is mentioned, SIPs and Shopee before mm. it and everything, quite frankly, to deal with the issue of poverty, I believe the stupid government is involved a lot. 
The issue of dealing with poverty, the government physical position has to be clearly designed and spelled out while execution should be directed. For example, if we're talking, talking about, about agriculture, we don't need to start the programs running with the government. We have Bank of Agriculture. I will resuscitate the Bank of Agriculture in Kaduna and ensure that they in turn support the farmers when it comes to issue of ensuring access to funding to deal with that issue. And other agencies that are designed that will deal with the issue of ensuring either issue to do with crops, issue to do live vegetation to do there's a lot you need to do if there's no one process issue of dealing with for example issue of dealing with small medium micro small businesses all you need to do is to resource state we used to have all the micro banks community banks and everything you got about 30 seconds and make them to function if you make them to function effectively Having a percentage of our lending go to this particular sector and their physical support. Okay, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Peter Obi. And let me come to you, uh, Rabi Kwankwaso, uh, to answer the same questions. And uh, I don't know, but you, 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 people say that the presidential candidates have remarkable memories. Your memory is yeah. probably better than mine, but hopefully you do remember what the yeah, questions I'm were. Fine. Now, you see, we, on the issue of state and local government uh, relationship, which the lady mentioned, uh, we had a model, which I believe is the best model. You see, in Kano, every month we sit down when our commissioner for uh, finance comes back uh, to the state, we sit down with the local governments. We, look at, we looked at uh, all the issues in the state, and of course the state means the entire local government. And we agree on a particular or particular projects. Now, first and foremost, we agree that uh, we have to pay salaries. We agree that we have to do all other necessary things in general terms, state and local governments. And then we look at other issues, like roads, like water supply, like electricity, and so on and so forth. And that was when we agreed that each local government should have uh, uh, five kilometer of dualized roads uh, within the local government headquarters with the street lights, with drainages, with walkways, and so on and so forth. And of course, we, we, we handle them as joint project. And local governments will go to the uh, councillors and everybody to sit down and agree and then come back with all the documents that the local governments have accepted to work together with us. And that's why we had our five kilometer roads in all the local government headquarters with all the facilities. That's why together with the local governments we are able to provide uh, turbines in two, uh, two our dams, Chala Gorge and uh, Tiga Dams, that, that Tiga Dam that uh, we had in Kano. And, and the project was al almost uh, completed. And that's why we selected so many other projects together with the local governments and we work harmoniously we're paying salaries everything pension all the requirements uh, that were with the government together with them we worked uh, peacefully and with a lot of success and that's why you often hear that uh, our strength is mainly in Kano for those who don't know that our strength is all over the country Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Kwan Kwaso. And uh, let me come to you, uh, Waziri Atiku Abubakar, to answer the same set of questions. Uh, thank, <clears throat> thank you very much. We have been on this poverty issue since the commencement of this uh, town hall meeting. I think Nigerians should be fair to PDP. Because when we were in power, the poverty rate is not as high as this. We initiated the needs and seeds. And that tremendously reduced our poverty rate. We were not, you know, having this kind of, you know, astronomical, you know, poverty rate as we have today. So that's why I say Nigeria should be fair to PDP for definitely uh, reducing poverty in this country. And I think those programs should be sustained. Even though the present administration tried 
you know, to copy, you know, or to continue with what we started. But unfortunately, they have not been able to do. Rather, the thing has gotten out of control, uh, you know, in, in the administration. Uh, so I believe uh, the, the, the program initiated by the PDP government, which brought down uh, poverty rate, which also made Nigeria uh, the largest economy in Africa, uh, should be sustained. And I intend to sustain, you know, those policies to make sure that poverty rate is considerably reduced to the barest minimum uh, as far as uh, the next administration is concerned, if I have the opportunity. And what about the issue of the local governments, which uh, Adeshua had asked about originally? Well, um, I have explained that we, we must look at our constitution. You know, I explained to you that uh, when we came into office, local government administration was in the office of the vice president. And for nine months, I was remitting, you know, uh, allocation direct to the local governments. And later on, the governor said that was unconstitutional. And then we came back to joint accounts. And we reversed to joint accounts. And since we reversed to the joint account, we now started having problems with the local government financing and also the management of the local government generally. Because if the local governments are starved of funds by a number of deductions being made by the state government, then uh, of course they will not be able to perform anything. Uh, so our laws have to be looked into to make sure that if we want complete independence for the local governments, we give them complete independence. And we don't, when we stop interfering uh, with their funding, so I think that should be looked at. I mean, it is not something you sit down here and say, I'm going to do X, Y, Z, because it involves legislation. And legislation uh, involves the National Assembly, involves the state assemblies. There is a fundamental flaw, you know, in our legislation as far as local government financing is concerned. Right. I, I don't know if we gave you the opportunity to answer that question, uh, Mr. Kwankwaso, but if we didn't, then I, I would ask you that question and whether you agree that there is, the Constitution is very clear that there is a division of work between the federal government, the state government, and the local government, because the, the, the states, um, the, the diversion of funds that should accrue to the local governments is something that concerns a lot of people here that as you know local governments are supposed to be closest to the people the their constitutional functions include everything from security to the redistribution of wealth at the grassroots level if you were president how will you reverse this diversion of local government funds which is clearly contributing to poverty and insecurity Yes, I think that was uh, the first question that was being uh, tackled. You see, uh, we were faced with uh, those issues when I was in government. But um, the issue of the constitutional amendment is very critical. It's very important under this circumstance so that uh, state and local governments can have adequate uh, resources to handle their issues. But that's when I said that uh, there was a need also for the federal government really to sit down with all the stakeholders, uh, state governors, and everybody, whether the same party or not, we are serving the same people. So that at the end of the day, every level of government, the federal, the state, and even the, the, the local governments can do their own version of the constitutional uh, uh, responsibilities. So um, we believe in NNPP that uh, there should be uh, 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 finances that are, should go direct instead of the joint account uh, that uh, we see today to the local governments so that uh, they can function uh, effectively together with the federal government and of course the state governments. Thank you very much indeed. We have considerably more clarity on that issue. Let me come to you, Mr. Peter B. We're going to change gears now and move on to another topic with everything from poverty, culture, economic upheaval, climate change and insecurity pushing the education crisis in Nigeria to the brink, unprecedented action is needed to dramatically improve education and get millions of children back into school, especially in northern Nigeria. What will you do as president 
to reverse the growing number of out-of-school children in this country? And you've got two minutes to answer that question. Well, you have to look at what we have been able to do so far in education at the federal and state level. But that, talking about the federal, uh, federal level now, our investment in education is low compared to even comparable countries. If you look at it, let me just use 2016 to date, six years, uh, to 2021. Our investment, our total investment in budget in education at the federal level is about 3 trillion, 3.6 trillion, just 3, 3 trillion, 550 billion. That's our investment for six years. That is not up to South African, which is second biggest economy, or about the same for one year. In 2020, their budget for education was 380 billion rands. If you convert this to, you will see the difference. So you need to invest more. And if you look at their own, it was about 15, between 14 and 16 percent. All throughout these six years, our budget is not up to 10 percent in education. There's no way that can happen with the pool of people we have out of school. I've, for me, this, Nigeria can design their budget differently. If we work hard in this country, there's a, I believe Nigeria can, if they pluck all revenues, be able to get a revenue of about 15 trillion annually. And if they are borrowing, not throwing a way to subsidy and other areas and curtailing cost of governance, they borrow about maybe another 10 trillion. You need about 25 trillion budget to start with. And 10% of that should go to education, 